Number 49. Identify the atoms that correspond to each of the following electron configurations, then write the Lewis symbol for the common ion formed from each atom. Okay, so easy enough. They gave us A through E, so I'm just going to write A, B, C, D, and we'll put E over here. I think I'll probably have room. Okie dokie. So the first thing we have to figure out is what are the atoms that correspond with these electron configurations? Now, they told us that they were atoms, which means that all the electrons that are counted for, for these, are going to be the true atom that's on the periodic table. So that means that there's no charge. So if we add up all the electrons that are counted on the electron configuration, then we will figure out which atom it is. And where are the electrons in the electron configuration? It's always the upper right-hand corner. So in here, it's 1s2. So that means that there's two electrons there. There's two electrons in the 2s orbital, and there's five electrons here. So if we just add up 2 plus 2 plus 5, we will get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that is the atomic number. And remember, the atomic number will never change for a certain atom. So now you just have to scan which one has the atomic number of 9. And that is fluorine. It has the 9 right here. So this atom is fluorine. So I guess let's just run through those first, and then we will figure out the Lewis symbol. So for the next one, for B, it would be 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2. So when you do that... We have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12, which is the atomic number. And if I scan the periodic table, 12 is over here. That's magnesium. So this would be magnesium. For C, we will have to add 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10. You guys get the drift? You probably do, right? So what do we got here? We got 18, 20, 26, uh, 2830, I just want to double check, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10, we get 30, and that is our atomic number, I'm just going to put a number, so now we scan for number 30 on the periodic table, number 30 is zinc, okay, Zn. For letter D, we would do 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10 plus 4. So when we do that, it basically would be the 30 from before, because it looks like all those numbers are exactly the same. So this would actually turn out to be 34. And that's the atomic number for that atom. And if we scan for number 34, we should come up with selenium. I'm just going to erase these. So this is SE. And then finally, we have 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 10 plus 1. So it looks like it's basically going to be number 31, and that's the atomic number. So 31 is gallium, G-A. All right, so we did the first part. Now we just have to figure out the Lewis symbol for the ions, and now the ions are going to be the charges. All right, so we have to know our oxidation state trend. So for fluorine, for A... Fluorine's over here. Fluorine would always want to gain one electron or become a negative one. So for A, I'm just going to put F. And now fluorine originally has seven valence electrons. So that means that it has seven electrons in the outermost shell. So I'm going to just put seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now fluorine is a minus one, right? So that means that it wants to gain one electron. So I'm going to add one additional electron. And now it's that ion that it wants to be. And when it is the ion, all you got to do is just box that off and just say the charge, negative one. And that would be the answer for A. So it was F, and now it turned into F minus one, which is the Lewis symbol. So you have to basically give two answers. For B, we have magnesium, which is over here. Magnesium originally has two valence electrons, but it likes to lose two. So technically, if I just drew this, magnesium had two dots. 
So I'll just say one and two, that's the two valence electrons. But since it's a plus two, that means that it loses two electrons. So I'm going to get rid of the two that I just drew. And now I will say that it's a charge of a two plus, or you could say plus two. It doesn't matter. So that takes care of that. Moving on. Zinc. Okay. Now this one is kind of tricky because there's no, basically, there's no trend for transition metals. However, this group acts in basically the same way. So we have to first find out the valence electrons. And remember, the valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell, which is the biggest n number. Now, if we examine zinc's electron configuration, it has a 2, a 2, a 2, a 3, 3, 4, and 3. Which one is the highest uh, shell number here? It would actually be the 4. So its valence electrons, I'll just put val E, is only coming from the 4s2. How many electrons does it have? It has 2 electrons. 2 valence electrons. So I'll put 1 and 2. Now, Metals, going back to what B looks like and what you would see with your metals in group 1, 2, and your metals in group 3, or 13, do they have any electrons at the end when they bind? No. They want to give off their valence electrons. So, in this case, Zn would want to lose these two electrons. And when it loses those two electrons, what's the charge? It would be a plus 2 so that would be the common ion for what zinc would be and what cadmium is as well. So if you want to memorize that zinc will always be a plus two charge, that's going to be the case. Zinc will be a plus two. D, selenium. Selenium is over, is over here, right? It has six valence electrons in the beginning, and then a negative two means that it gains two electrons. So let's write it out. So selenium originally has six valence electrons, so I'll say one, two, three, four, five, and six. But then it gains two, always group it as a pair, so I'll say one and two, and now it has the octet, so that's perfect, and we just have to bracket this off and just say two minus or minus two, and that would be the most common ion for that. And then last but not least, we have gallium. Gallium is over here, it has three valence electrons, and it always has a plus three charge, which means that it will lose those three electrons. So gallium had one, two, three. But now, when it becomes an ion, it has to lose three electrons. It's a plus three. So the ones that I just drew, they go bye-bye. And as you can see, it follows the same trend as the zinc. There's no valence electrons anymore. And magnesium, there's no valence electrons anymore. So I just have to box this off and put a 3 plus or a plus 3 charge, whatever you prefer. But that's it. And that's the end for 49. This one was pretty easy peasy. All right? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying to the end. And thanks for supporting us. If you want to support the channel, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you want to write, you know, a comment, tell us how you're doing in your class. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Happy studying.